What's going on guys, this is Bento and I'm here with another playtest of the Steam Controller. This time I'm going to be testing it out on Payday 2 The Heist. Although I don't think it's called The Heist anymore actually. Um, anyway, so coming from Fallout 4, I wanted to practice the Steam Controller on more, I guess, FPS intensive games. I mean, not that Fallout 4 is FPS intensive, but when you look at Payday 2, which deals with more horde mode kind of, kind of scenarios, you have to toss bags, you have to do some really fast objectives, you kind of have to like kill enemies on the fly. It's definitely more Twitch based and so I kind of wanted to see if the Steam controller is at least up to snuff. Definitely not gonna be my new keyboard and mouse combo obviously but I wanted to see if it's just as good as my... Um, if I can be competent essentially with the Steam controller and try to kill as many enemies as possible and try not to die so much in Payday. So as, as for my control scheme, what I have it on right now is that the left and right triggers are still essentially what they are for most FPS games. Left is to aim, right is to shoot. Um, the trackpad on the right is the typical movement for trying to look around. I actually have a similar control scheme for Payday, just like Fallout 4, where I actually have the Y button to jump. And the reason I, I like, um, even though it's kind of funny that some people actually don't like or are always wondering why the Y button is to jump, I guess that's because it's the closest to the button, maybe the B one too, but the B is kind of weird. But anyway, um, I like the Y button as jump because it's closer to my thumb, uh, closer to the thumb pad on the right. Um, so I'm, when I'm aiming, I can at least, I don't have to move all the way down to like the A button. So I kind of, I actually kind of like that in that regard. The B button for me is actually the equipment button. So for payday, that's usually someone's med bag, the ammo bag that you need to give to the team. The A button is actually my interact, so if I need to interact with like a key or if I need to get like a safe or open up, open it up, I need to hold A basically. And I'm, I'm fine with that as the bottom button just because you don't have to move so much when you're interacting. The X button is actually my reload, although I have been messing around with it too. I actually have my right bumper as reload as well because I want to keep my thumb aiming while I'm still like shooting. So that way I don't have to move my thumb and I have my, my pointer finger on my right just reload for me. My left thumbstick is again just my movement but I actually have my left thumbstick on sprint. Um, and I actually have my sprint and my crouch on pre just press once and you don't have to hold it. And I think that's just very typical controllers because it's really I guess finger intensive to have to hold um, crouch and um, sprint all the time. So again, this is just for convenience. And my left D-pad is actually for choosing weapons. So if, if I were to click the top portion, it would be selecting my primary weapon. If I click the right portion, it would be selecting my secondary, I believe. And if I click the bottom portion, it'd just be throwing my grenade. And in Payday, it's like if you hit three, um, you pretty much throw your grenade, which I thought was kind of funny the first time playing it, but eh, you kind of get used to it. But overall, um, playing this scenario, playing this mission with um, the Steam Controller felt pretty... Um, at first, again, like it's so hard to get used to because you're kind of overwhelmed by all these controls. Um, but I did eventually kind of pick it up a bit. And I mean, as you can see here, I still have trouble aiming because it's still something to get used to. But I mean, it's I was still confident enough to kill enemies as much as possible, like keep up with um, some of my teammates. And actually, one of my teammates is using, is using the keyboard and mouse because we just want to make sure like we don't fail the mission completely. My other buddy, um, if you see his name right now, Uncle Fudge, who I'm actually <laughs> resurrecting right here, he's also using the Steam controller. So we're actually kind of practicing those a bit. Uh, oh, and um, I forgot to mention, the left and right back pedals, I actually have those on crouch. And the, well, the left one's on crouch, the right is on melee. And I like the I like that for melee just because um, when I'm it's one of my, my one of my only fingers that I can use to have to not worry about like reloading or doing something else, and so I can just melee the moment somebody gets close. And in Payday, I actually do have a melee build with um, with Jiro, if any of you guys know who he is from the DLC updates. But he's got this insane katana which I love using, and so I pretty much just run up to people and like stab him in the in the gut or just um, behead them. But like I said, um, as I was saying, um, so far, I mean, it's worked out pretty well. Uh, one of the issues I definitely had was trying to take out huge mobs of enemies because I'm not so used to um, trying to aim as fast as my mouse with the thumbstick. It's really hard for me to go from target to target with enemies so far. 
Although I, one thing I definitely was at least happy about is that taking out snipers, taking out far targets was really easy. I mean, as, I mean, comparatively speaking, I'm, I'm again, you have to get used to it. But aiming, trying to aim down far, trying to get pick off enemies at a distance was pretty good. Um, again, you just have to practice it a bit though. And if any of you who are familiar with Payday, there's this one guy called Winters who pretty much annoys the shit out of you in one of the missions. You have to kill him, otherwise, like, the horde won't keep coming, or, uh, like, the cops don't keep coming. Now, I'm sure some of you guys know about Payday, but, like, essentially you have to kill him in order to let, in order to make the, um, assault stop. So, here I'm just cleaning up the rabble, and then we're gonna move to Winters and try to kill him. But um, as for other issues, I honestly didn't have that big, have big of a trouble um, adjusting. One, the only real problem that you have to get used to is again the back pedals because you you really have to feel like they're there. You are uh, they're there. You have to kind of feel like you have to get used to them. It's again, again because I'm used to PS, PlayStation and Xbox controllers. It's just really awkward to have those um, buttons there. But again, they are kind of a necessity and they do really help if you familiarize with yourself with them. What I thought was actually cool with the scene controller is that the left and right triggers actually have dual inputs. And what do I mean by this? So the left trigger and right trigger have a soft uh, trigger pull action, pull trigger action, and they actually have also a hard trigger pull action. And so if you were to map it properly, you can actually have the triggers do two different functions where if you were to soft pull, it'll do one action, and if you were to hard pull, it'll do another action entirely. So I think like one example of this is like maybe a gun has dual firing um, options, like maybe an auto fire or like a single fire. And so what, ha what, what, I, what I would do it in another game is that like the soft trigger pull action might be my single fire, whereas the hard trigger pull action might just be my auto fire. I tried messing around with this in Payday where I actually had the soft trigger pull action on my right trigger as the shoot and I actually tried using a melee for the hard right trigger pull action. It worked a bit at first because I thought maybe I was fast enough but what, it, what actually ended up happening was that um, anytime I tried to melee someone I'd end up, I'd end up firing a bullet and I, I, it pretty much just wasted some, some of my ammo and so instead I decided to keep my melee in the... Um, the right uh, back pedal. I, I don't even know if it's called the back pedal. If I'm wrong, guys, please correct me because I'm still trying to figure out what the actual naming convention for these buttons are. Oh, and another thing I thought was kind of cool was that one of the recommended um, control figure configurations on Steam was that if you were to actually press and hold the right uh, trackpad while you're aiming, it'll actually decrease the sensitivity of how fast you're aiming. And so that actually is really cool because um, and that, what what that means is that if you're trying to move around, trying to like look around and stuff, you can just do that normally without having to press like anything else. But it's, it's if let's say if you want to shoot and properly aim, then you can just hold down the right D-pad, and it'll actually decrease the sensitivity of your looking, and that way you have more precise aiming over who you want to shoot. So I thought that was kind of cool, and I I think that sort of helped me a bit because that means I can zero in on like a target's head or like a sniper without having to like move too much. Though if you are up close like you are, I am doing right now, I do have to. <laughs> I mean, you can just move however fast you need to. One thing I do have an issue, and I mean, if you've played Payday enough, you're you might be familiar with it, is that um, trying to like circle around shields gets really frustrating. Um, even, even on mouse and keyboard, sometimes I have like issues where the shield is just perfectly aligned with me and I can never get his backside. And I was able, I mean, a couple times, maybe this game and maybe I'll probably practice a little more. Um, I was able to actually circle around the shields successfully um, just by and instantaneously actually getting right behind them. Um, I could probably do the same with a normal controller, honestly, but I like the fact that I can turn around a full 180 like instantaneously. That, that's honestly, I feel like that's one advantage that the Steam controller has um, much more over conventional controllers because with the D-pad you have much faster aiming, you have that option of swiping so you can aim a lot faster. That's And that's also something that I think is, um, if ever you um, want to try the Steam controller, that swiping motion is something you do have to get used to. At first it feels weird, I mean if you're kind of used to like maybe the iPhone swiping kind of thing like um, scrolling down menus and that sort of a deal. It might be easier to get adjust, but again, if it's your first time using it, 
it's going to be really, really awkward. But I feel like it's kind of necessary because that just makes your aiming or turning a lot more fa or a lot faster. So like as you can see here, I'm, I I want to try and take out each of these mobs with like as much headshots as possible. But unfortunately, I my aiming is with the controller so far isn't as good as I'd like. Actually, something I thought that was really funny um, by the end of the mission was that my fingers were hurting quite a bit. And I really attribute that to the fact that I still had to get used to the controls. I had to try to memorize what button is what. And so while doing that, I mean, I ended up pressing other buttons. And so my fingers were working a little harder than they should have been. Um, and so that really that really just emphasizes the fact that with this controller, you have to get used to how many, how many buttons there are and trying to memorize each of their functions. I kind of think of it like you're trying to get used to a fight stick because you have to memorize like Shoryu motions, like Hadouken motions kind of thing. Maybe not that hard, but that being said, again, with time and practice, I think this controller can be really good. I think my next step for the Steam controller would be try taking um, other genre games that might not be very uh, controller friendly. Maybe like an RTS game or even like a game like Dota 2. Um, I might actually try taking it out on CSGO. Now that might be a little tough because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get my ass handed to me. But you know, it's maybe it's kind of like worth trying out. But definitely I'm gonna be doing a lot of bot practice with it and then maybe try an online game, but who knows that, <laughs> that that's gonna be pretty rough. I've also tried the Steam controller on smaller games like say Downwell or Under Undertale and some other indie games as well. Um, although it's not really that um, special because the Steam, I mean you can do, you can play those games uh, similarly if not easier with any normal controller. But the games I kind of want to test out are, are games that really are either keyboard intensive or just there's a distinguishing factor between controller and keyboard support. And so if it, if it feels like it really needs to be played on keyboard, then that's where I kind of really want to try where the Steam controller might be able to play. So we're basically done with the mission, but overall, I really liked how the controller worked for Payday 2. Um, like I said, I my hands were hurting and I think the controls are still something to get used to, but I feel like this control scheme and this setup works really, really well. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments and I'll happily respond. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all next time.